Hey, what's up everybody? This is Carl coming at you with another light burn quick tips on sublayers. So I did a video the other day talking about layers and one of the questions that I received was what are sublayers and how do you use them? Uh, basically, what are they there for? So I'm going to give you a quick practical example, um, just one way you could use sublayers. Uh, I'm sure there's a hundred different options out there uh, for a hundred different needs out there for this, but this is just one that kind of is top of mind. And that is taking a look at like these laser cut layered signs that everybody loves. Uh, monogram signs, you know, nice stylized letters that you might run your name down the middle. And I'm going to show you how to quickly do this in Lightburn without a lot of fuss using sublayers. All right, so let's start out. I've got this nice little monogram C here. And I'm going to... You know, you can see this is a single object. It's uh, it's not broken apart into its component pieces, and it's on one layer. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this, and I'm going to kind of show you what it'll do on a line, what it'll do on a fill, and then show you how we can combine all that to do all of what we need in a single operation, or actually three operations on a single object uh, on a single layer. So by default, we drop this in here and it's going to do a line. And that line can be anything from just tracing a line and scoring, or it can be a high power burn to cut, uh, whatever your line setting might be off the top. You know, uh, So that's one option. I can also take this, move it to, let's say, a fill layer. And if I look at that fill layer, yeah, great, that fills it in, but it doesn't actually cut it out. So that doesn't give me the monogram, the, the layered look that I'm looking for of being able to stack on top of other pieces of material. So I'm gonna go with option three. Uh, and I've got a layer that I started to set up here and I'm gonna set this up from scratch again. Um, but this layer, or this basically is going to allow me to do multiple operations on this single stylized monogram letter C here. And I'm going to start out with a fill, and you know that'll give me what we saw, which is the nice engraved look. And I'm going to actually come in here and I'm going to hit this little plus sign up here. So you got a plus and minus, or um, you can get a clone if you want. But I'm going to add a new sub layer. And I'm going to go through and I'm going to turn that layer into a line layer. And let's say I want to do, I don't know, 60 at 30. I'm just kind of guessing at some, some numbers here because uh, I don't really have a material in mind and I'm not hooked up to my machine right now anyway. Um, but so this is, you know, number of passes, one, zero kerf offset. This is going to give me just a basic trace. So it'll do a center trace down, down those lines. And this is together going to give me the equivalent of what used to be uh, fill plus line in versions prior to, I think, 1.2, give or take. Um, there was an option for fill, fill plus line that would do an engraved fill and then come back and trace the outline. And what that does is it cleans up and gives you nice crisp edges where your overscan um, or your scan lines may not have been, you know, perfectly... Uh, aligned around the entire shape. So if we just take a look at that in a preview, you'll see that both operations, it does the scans first because they're the first in the order uh, on the sub layers. And then next it's going to come through and I'm going to slow this down just so we can see it. And it's going to come through and actually trace the outline. So that's again, two operations, one shape, one layer. So fill plus line. All right, now I want to go one step further and I want to cut this out. So I'm going to add another line uh, layer and we'll hit plus again or we can hit clone. If I hit clone, it actually, that's not what I wanted. It cloned the, the tab that I was on. Um, so if I'm on this line and I hit clone, it's going to clone that and give me a, another line layer. So if you saw when I was over here, I hit clone, it gave me another fill. If I'm here and hit clone, it gives me a line layer. And then to delete, I'm just hitting the, the minus here. Um, okay, so this is going to be cut layer. This is going to be a trace layer. And that's going to be a fill layer. And I'm just naming these for quick and easy reference. Okay, so now my cut layer, let's slow it way down, jack the power way up. Mode line, number passes one. Now what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to actually give myself about a two millimeter 
uh, curve offset. And so what that's going to do, and you see that it defaulted to outward. Um, if I went minus two, it would go inward, but I want outward. So this is actually going to take and give me a layer, uh, a slow speed pass, high power line that is two millimeters of offset from the actual shape. So now what that looks like is that gives me what I'm after. So it does my scan. It does my cleanup pass to trace the lines out. And then it comes in it runs my two millimeter offset and cuts out the entire piece. And so what I'll end up with is I'll end up with two halves here, um, top and bottom half that I can then take and maybe split apart and put a name down the middle and glue these to another piece of wood or a piece of acrylic or whatever I'm working on. Um, so that's just a quick practical look at sub layers. Um, so again, I want to enact multiple operations on a single shape since I can't split a single shape into multiple layers unless I duplicate it. So you could, you could come in here, control D and then, you know, line them up and put the second copy on a layer and do another operation to it. Um, and you can, you know, you can continue to stack them that way onto their own standalone layers. Um, but it's just much easier to come in here and take your single item, your single shape and do multiple operations to it. Uh, all from one layer and one copy of the object. So that's it. Um, hopefully that helps you understand what sub layers are and how to use them. Uh, you know, I'd love to see what you put them to use on in your projects. As always, you know, feel free to drop over to the Lightburn homepage and download Lightburn if you don't have it or jump over to the support forums and ask your questions there. Lots of people willing to help. You've got tutorials up there that'll take you to some of the Lightburn official tutorial videos. And of course you can link to the documentation where just about everything that I'm covering is touched on in the documentation uh, to give you a great starting point for your next project. So until next time, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to my channel to help my videos get seen and help me bring more useful content uh, to, to all my subscribers. So thanks again.